What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya, and I really hope that you're safe and healthy. In today's lesson, we're going to boost your vocabulary by learning 10 advanced phrasal verbs. Are you ready to increase your vocabulary? If so, take a notebook and let's kick off. So first, we're going to learn three C1 phrasal verbs and then seven C2. So the first C1 phrasal verb is to catch on. To catch on. And it has two meanings. The first meaning of the phrasal verb to catch on is to become fashionable or popular. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, slouchy jeans caught on very quickly. Slouchy jeans caught on very quickly. The second example, I don't think this app will catch on with young people. I don't think this app will catch on with young people. And one more example, their new product never really caught on. Their new product never really caught on. And the second meaning of to catch on is to understand or realize something especially after an initial struggle. If we want to say what we understand, we use the preposition to, to catch on to something. And now some examples. The first one, at first, I didn't catch on to what he said. At first, I didn't catch on to what he said. The second example, his strong suit is that he's very quick to catch on to things. His strong suit is that he's very quick to catch on to things. And the last example, okay, now I'm catching on. Okay, now I'm catching on. And now let's move on to our second phrasal verb, which is to read up on something or about something. Both propositions are correct. To read up on or about something. It means to spend time reading in order to find out information about something. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, before setting up your own company, you should read up on legal requirements. Before setting up your own company, you should read up on legal requirements. The second example, I don't know much about the topic, so I have to read up on it. I don't know much about the topic, so I'll have to read up on it. And one more example, it's a good idea to read up about the destination you're going to visit before setting off. It's a good idea to read up about the destination you're going to visit before setting off. Let's continue. Our phrase of verb number three is to take to something or somebody. To take to something or somebody. It means to start to like something or somebody. And now a few examples. The first one, I took to riding an electric scooter immediately. I took to riding an electric scooter immediately. The second example, Tom took to his new colleague from day one. Tom took to his new colleague from day one. And the last example, the child took to the puppy straight away. The child took to the puppy straight away. And now let's move on to our C2 phrasal verbs. Number four is to come along. To come along. And it has two meanings. The first meaning of to come along is to make progress, to improve, to get better, in quality, skill, health, etc. And now some examples. The first one, you can ask somebody, how are you coming along with the final project? How are you coming along with the final project? Which means, are you making progress with the final project? The second example, the house construction is coming along nicely. The house construction is coming along nicely. And one more example, your English is really coming along. Your English is really coming along. And the second meaning of to come along 
is to start to exist, happen, or be available. And now, three examples. The first one, their lives changed a lot when their child came along. Their lives changed a lot when their child came along. The second example, my life changed for the better when the electric scooter came along. My life changed for the better when the electric scooter came along. And the last example, movies like Parasite don't come along often. Movies like Parasite don't come along often. Let's continue. Our phrase of verb number five is to have it in for somebody. To have it in for somebody. If somebody has it in for you, it means that they don't like you and they want to make your life difficult. And now let's look at some examples. The first example, she's always had it in for me. She's always had it in for me. The second example, do you think he has it in for me? Do you think he has it in for me? And the last example, his school years were tough as his classmates had it in for him. His school years were tough as his classmates had it in for him. Let's continue. Our phrase verb number six is to keep something from somebody. To keep something from somebody. It means not to tell somebody about something. And now some examples. The first one, I can't believe he kept this information from me. I can't believe he kept this information from me. The second example, I think she's keeping something from me. I think she's keeping something from me. And the last example, I told the truth as I didn't want to keep anything from them. I told the truth as I didn't want to keep anything from them. And there is also the phrase verb to keep somebody or something from doing something, which means to prevent somebody or something from doing something. And now three examples. The first one, doing sport keeps you from putting on weight. Doing sport keeps you from putting on weight. The second example, his poor English keeps him from being promoted. His poor English keeps him from being promoted. And the last example, making videos keeps me from getting bored. Making videos keeps me from getting bored. And you guys, tell me what keeps you from getting bored during quarantine. Let me know in the comments below. And now let's move on to our phrase verb number seven, which is to look over. To look over. It means to quickly examine something in order to get a general idea of what it's like. And now three examples. The first one, please, could you look over the figures when you have time? Please, could you look over the figures when you have time? The second example, he looked over the contract before signing it. He looked over the contract before signing it. And one more example, she looked over the exam before handing it in. She looked over the exam before handing it in. Number eight, to loosen yourself up. To loosen yourself up. Pronunciation, lon u. Loosen. It means to relax and calm the nerves. And now, some examples. The first one, I was very nervous before the speech, but once I got to the stage, I managed to loosen myself up. I was very nervous before the speech, but once I got to the stage, I managed to loosen myself up. The second example, people usually turn to alcohol as it loosens them up. People usually turn to alcohol as it loosens them up. And the last example, he loosened up the atmosphere with a joke. He loosened up the atmosphere with a joke. Okay, our second to last phrase verb is to shower somebody with something. To shower somebody with something. It means to give somebody a lot of presents or praise. 
And now some examples. The first one, my mom showered me with presents. My mom showered me with presents. The second example, he was showered with praise for his latest book. He was showered with praise for his latest book. And one more example, students showered their teacher with positive feedback. Students showered their teacher with positive feedback. And last but not least, the phrasal verb to stumble upon something or somebody. To stumble upon something or somebody. It means to discover something by chance or to meet somebody by chance. It's a synonym of to come across or to run into. And now three examples. The first one, I stumbled upon an old photo album when I was cleaning. I stumbled upon an old photo album when I was cleaning. The second example, I stumbled upon a note brand at the cinema. I stumbled upon a note brand at the cinema. And the last example, Jack stumbled upon a skeleton in the closet when studying his family tree. Jack stumbled upon a skeleton in the closet when studying his family tree. And we say to stumble on something or somebody when we physically slip. For example, I stumbled on a log and fell down. I stumbled on a log and fell down. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson and it helped you expand your vocabulary. And make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss new lessons. And last but not least, catch me on Instagram as there is a daily quiz waiting for you. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Stay safe. Ciao for now.